He can literally sit on my lap for hours, you guys. I think I need to do a video where I just apply makeup and have Harvey sitting beside me the whole time. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Jenna. Welcome back to my channel today. Today we're going to be trying out some new makeup releases. I'm so excited. We have some makeup from Lisa Eldridge. We have some NARS makeup. We have some Pat McGrath. We have the new Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina Pressed Pigment Volume 5 to get into. And you can see I created this gorgeous look with that palette. So let's get started. All right, let's dive right into some of this new makeup here. I'm super excited to try out First of all, the ABH Norvina collection. This is the Pro Volume 5. This is a big palette. Like this is way bigger than I thought it would be. <laughs> I'll be honest. I don't have any of the other Norvina palettes, which is probably why I was so like surprised by how big this was. This is like the size of my head. <laughs> it's crazy big. I do love the packaging though. I think it's super beautiful. You can see it's a little bit reflective there. This is hard plastic as well. You can see just kind of from first glance, there's a couple that are a little bit similar. I'm more so looking at C5 and E5 kind of on the right column there. And then D4 and D5, I can tell they're different finishes, but they look very similar. Right then and there, I'm kind of like, sort of wish that those were not quite so close, but let's swatch them and see as well if they're truly dupes. I mean, <laughs> like, they vary very fraction of a degree in my opinion. <laughs> so those are C5 and E5 and they're similar too, you know? So for this palette, just kind of like a first impression, I do wish that those shades had a little bit more diversity there because there are quite a few shades here and that's a little bit of a missed opportunity for me personally. I am very excited to test it though because it looks like you can do some browns, some purples, some pinks. A lot of us like to use pinks and purples instead of like blue or green. There's just a little bit more of a jump to some of those shades sometimes. I personally feel that anyway. So priming right away with of course the Smashbox 24 hour eye primer. I was super excited to see your guys' interest in this palette because out of all of the ones I talked about in my video last week, talking about all the exciting new releases, this was definitely exciting to see from Anastasia Beverly Hills because I think previous Norvina palettes were quite a bit more bright and bold. This is of course bright and bold, but it's purple, which is a beautiful color that I think a lot of us can wear a little bit easier than some other colors. Okay, now let's open up this bad boy. This is definitely not gonna be like a travel friendly palette. Like, can I be totally honest? Look at this, it's massive. This is gonna be just for your personal use at home. I, <laughs> I would be so terrified this would shatter in like travel. I think I'm going to do a purple look with this one. How appropriate. You can absolutely do other looks, of course. I'm gonna try the purple here. See, this is pigmented you guys, very pigmented. Definitely applying nice and smoothly on the lid. I will say I am building it up a little bit. It is quite pigmented, so I'm going slow and steady, but it's definitely a beautiful, like bright, bright purple. Sort of reminds me of, well, I guess Barney is a little bit more pink than this, <laughs> but I'm like, oh yeah, this is like Barney purple, but no, it's, Barney is a little bit redder purple, I think. I do want to do a shimmer because that's just what I'm about. So using a Wayne Goss number 18, I'm going to go in with A3. So just so you know, when it comes to applying B3, which was that really beautiful matte that I have all over the lid, this is a palette that has kick up in pan as well. At least that's what I've experienced. Now this brush is dirty on the one side. <laughs> oh man, I do have to wash my brushes. So I'm just gonna use the other side to gently pat this shimmer shade all over. I do have to like really pump myself up to wash my brushes. I just like, it's gotta be one of the worst things in the world, hey? If anybody actually enjoys washing their brushes, tell me how I can pump myself up because sometimes it's just such a chore. And then when it finally comes time to washing them, I have a, a ton to wash, so then it makes it even worse. <laughs> But this is actually giving quite a bit of a nice shimmer already. You don't even have to have a wet brush. Definitely like medium to full opacity as is. So I do love that. Shimmer does have a teeny bit of fallout and same with the kick up in the pan. Adding some depth with the Wayne Gloss number 20, I'm gonna go in with C5, which I know is a very, very deep color and has a lot of pigment. So I'm gonna be very careful with this one. Just adding a little bit of depth in that outer corner there. I think I do want to try a little bit more shimmer. 
There's one shade in here that almost looks like a top coat. It is quite shimmer heavy, but I'm thinking it's gonna be more like a topper. This is looking super, super beautiful so far. Might have to kind of blend some of those edges out a little bit, but you can see, so this is definitely a hooded eye problem. You can see in my look here, I'm just gonna use a clean brush. See how it kind of like goes up and then slants like this on both sides? This is because I go like this. When you go like this, you can almost see it's a little bit more circular. When you go like this, like down, it's just like my eye shape. It just kind of like hides a little bit. So this is why I like to go in with a brush that has had some pigment on it, but not a ton. And I just like to blend it out when my eyes are relaxed. Do you guys see how much of a difference that is? It just adds that when your eyes are at rest. So just know that when you have hooded eyes or any sort of like downward shaping eye in any way, just make sure that your eyes are actually relaxed because it does tend to help when you're looking at your final product. When people talk to you, it's not gonna be like this. It's gonna be, you know, looking straight straight on and not with your eyebrows raised. I believe Mel Thompson taught me that trick actually because I told her that sometimes when I'm applying eyeshadow, it just looks funny when my eyes come down and she's like, probably because you have a different eye shape. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go in with that topper shade that looks so beautiful. This is D2. It's like fun confetti, like crazy shimmer. I really hope this isn't a mistake. No, actually, I think it looks lovely. I do think it is much more of a heavier topper, which is what I expected. I'm only putting it on the inside of the look and blending out to the center but this is one that you don't even need glitter glue for. I was kind of expecting that maybe it was gonna fall over my face, but it's a little bit falling, but not a lot. Definitely makes the eyes a lot more like fun, glitzy, that's for sure. And applying it with a finger gave me quite a bit of control there, but I will say it almost has like a slight tackiness to it ever so slightly that it adheres to the eye well. So D2 is the shade I'm talking about here. You can see it's very fun, like peachy pink with some kind of greeny yellow elements. Super, super beautiful and definitely like an interesting shade texture in this palette. It's definitely a fun shade, very like party-esque and I'm for it. I absolutely love it. So let's leave the look there and let's get to eyeliner. Okay, so I do wanna try the Victoria Beckham eyeliner, but I'm very nervous, very nervous. I don't typically use a stick eyeliner and sometimes I tend to apply it quite heavy when I do do a stick eyeliner. So I'm gonna go very, very careful with this one. Eyeliner is on and it's definitely one of my tricks to make sure that you're applying any liner that you can if possible. Just try to practice with your eye lid open. Sometimes when you go like this, it can be straight or it can be quite heavy when you open up your eye when you realize, right? And that could just be a hooded eye thing as well. Very, very nice though. This like I barely, barely tapped my lid with this satin Kajal liner from Victoria Beckham. The shade I have is Ash, which is not quite a rich black like I'm used to, but it's almost leaning more to a charcoal or kind of a light gray black. So it still gives that nice definition that I'm after, but it's super, super beautiful and slightly minimal. So I do like that. I'm gonna actually go in with mascara now. I did try the Bite Mascara before. This will be my third attempt, I think, at this one, but it is my newest mascara. So let's give this one a go as well. I like how this one lifts and separates. This one does do a good job. This was recommended by you guys, and I actually really, really like this one. Looking at the new products that I have, I'm super excited to actually test out the Lisa Eldridge primers. Now these are the Elevated, Elevated, Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin. I did pick up two shades. I picked up Cosmic Rose and Crystal Nebula. So I picked up two of them. One of them definitely has more of a golden aspect and the other one is a little bit more pearl. So you can see the difference there. I'm gonna swatch both of them as well. This is beautiful, you guys. It's very, very luxe, has a heavy frosted glass base and it has a golden cap there. Now the golden cap is very similar finish wise to her lipstick packaging. As a Canadian, when it comes to Lisa Eldridge and ordering off of her site, do know you guys that this is going to be a pricier luxury line because of course, not only is it more expensive because we're talking about euros or I think, sorry, no, British pounds getting converted into Canadian dollars when you order, but then you also have the crazy duties charge. It is insane. Like I. 
ordered quite a few things, but my duties charge was 60 bucks on top of that. So it is something to watch for. Not every brand charges us duties and taxes. They probably just put it into the pricing of some kind or they figure something out with the border. So just make sure you're prepared for that when ordering off of her site. Blend and smooth the thin layer into skin, either using fingers or a brush and then continuing with your makeup routine. Okay, so I'm gonna actually just do a couple of drops just like what she's saying here with the doe foot. The doe foot applicator, a little bit wider than Flawless Filter, but similar idea. I don't know how glowy this is gonna be. <laughs> Got a little pimple here. That's one of those ones that, you know when it's just so painful, it's not even like a head yet or anything and it doesn't look like it's gonna be a head <laughs> anytime soon. That's what that one is. It's really, really hard to cover those up and when you get them on your face it's uh, not the best feeling but we deal with it it is showing it is showing a slight sheen just in case it was going to be quite luminous I did apply it lightly so there's the first layer I can absolutely see it bouncing off of my forehead that's for sure and my cheekbones so I would start with a light hand with this one and build from there but you really don't need a ton to have that really nice glowy base. She uses this for a highlighter as well for the high points of the face. So one of those multi-purpose products just like Flawless Filter and Oryx Glow Lust. I will say the difference just kind of working with the Lisa Eldridge one is that a lighter layer gives you a bit more of a subtle glow. It's not something that I'm worried about. I'm going to look like a disco ball really quickly. I think with all three of them, the Auric one has the most tendency to get quite like disco ball shiny the fastest with the most little product possible. Then we have Flawless Filter, which is kind of like a medium ground, I think. The Lisa Eldridge, to me, you can have the most control with. It gives you that glow, absolutely but it gives you even more flexibility to add as you go. Flawless Filter is definitely in the middle when it comes to that glow factor. You can go maybe a little bit more heavier handed, but still being a tad careful. Auric is definitely the one where you have to be the most careful because you can light up quick with that one. <laughs> so obviously these are exaggerated swatches, but you can see there's quite a difference between them, right? We do have that nice pearly pink undertone with the Cosmic Rose. Crystal Nebula has that golden beigey undertone. Now the foundation that I wanted to try today is actually the NARS Tinted Moisturizer. I've tried this a few times now. Now this is one that a lot of you guys are asking me for my opinion on simply because it is one of like, you know, the latest and greatest tinted moisturizers. And I have a very, very strong love for the Tarte Maracuja Tinted Hydrator. This is one that's right up there though because it has a very similar look on the skin. Like the Tarte one gives me some radiance, this one does also. The Tarte one gives me a light to medium buildable coverage, this one does also. This one does have a bit of a stronger scent than the Tarte one, so it has more of like a beachier, sunscreeny kind of scent. But I'm not seeing a ton of difference between these two products. Look at that already. So with the NARS tint as well, woo, we've got some glow factor going on. This is a radiant tinted moisturizer. Even though the Tarte one is similar, I do think the NARS one provides you a little bit more of a radiance. But coverage is close. Maybe NARS is like a little bit more coverage wise. Both are buildable though. I think it's going to depend more so on what you prefer. If you prefer more of a radiance, the NARS will work better. But if you prefer not so much a fragrant formulation. I think the Tarte one would be great too. So you really can't go wrong with either of them. Looking at the face here, I'm gonna do a little bit of spot concealing. I'm actually gonna use the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and I'm gonna use the shade 2.3. There we go. Just to get a little bit in this area here, just to cover up some of that darkness. It's very slight, but it's definitely there. And I'll put a coat on Big Bertha. Now we're ready to set. I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Skin Finish Powder. I'm also going to use a BK Beauty 102. I picked out a couple lipsticks too, so she included this cute little canvas bag in the Tiffany blue color. This is the Enlivening, Enlivening Blush, Enlivening Blush. This is in the shade Pink Soap. Ooh, this one looks really beautiful. You can see the shade at the bottom. I'll flip it around so you can see that. So the shade peeks through at the very top. I was told that this is pigmented, so I have to be careful. See how this goes. Whoa, <laughs> this is pigmented, guys. 
kind of carrying it with the sponge a little bit just so I can get more surface area. So it does sheer out quite a bit. So no need to be afraid. If you do have a little bit too much kind of on the cheek there, you can see that it shears out beautifully. So very, very buildable, not to worry at all. That was kind of my biggest thing was I was like, uh oh, I just wrecked my makeup. <laughs> but it is kind of moussey in texture when you finally pump it out. This is gonna last you a long time. You can also definitely apply it with a brush. Pink soap is super, super beautiful. Absolutely love this color. This will be enough blush to absolutely last for the rest of time, that's for sure. There is 15 milliliters of product in here and I didn't need that much, <laughs> you can tell. For highlight, I'm actually gonna try the Pat McGrath Labs highlight today. This is the Skin Finish Fet Skin Fetish Divine Rose Highlighter. No, Divine Glow. <sighs> Learn how to read, girl. This is the beautiful compact here. I'm actually gonna zoom in for you as well. Same compact style as the blushes for reference. And you can see there's a little bit of kick up in the pan already. That's just from a swatch. It absolutely does tend to lift off of the pan a little bit, so just be careful with that. Now remember, this one has a little bit of a pinkness underneath. So that's why I put my blush on first, because I wanted to see how much of that was gonna have to be blended into the blush a little bit. So you can absolutely see the highlighter, but it does have quite a bit more of that underneath pink pigment than I thought it would. I also feel it slightly emphasizing texture, not terribly, but enough. So I'm gonna leave it here because I do think that for my light neutral skin tone, you can definitely over apply this and then get more of a streaky look. So let's leave it here. I don't know about bronzer. I think I might add a little bit of bronzer. I'm gonna use the LYS bronzer. This is the one that you guys recommended to me. This is in the shade Motivate. It's the light shade. I'm gonna go in with a rougher number five brush and I'm just doing some targeted bronzing work here, just a little bit. Normally I do bronzer first actually, but I really wanted to try that blush. <laughs> so far, Lisa Eldridge has absolutely killed it with her releases. I love her lipsticks. This is a very smooth powder bronzer from LYS. Love the metallic pink packaging. You can see that. Look how metallic that is. <laughs> you can see everything in my reflection. There's a few shades in this line as well if you are interested in checking them out. They did go through a period there where it was almost impossible to get something in stock. <laughs> so it was just that popular. I am going to try the Victoria Beckham lip liner. This is the number two lip liner and this is actually one that is a little bit more on the stiffer side, but let's try it. Super random question for you guys. You can see I've got the lip liner on. Do you just line the lips and then do your lipstick or do you actually fill it in with the lip liner too? I think I'm gonna fill in today just so I can get some more practice with it, but I am curious how you guys usually use a lip liner. If it's just to line or if it's to line and fill. I wonder if this lipstick will, ugh, this might clash with my eyes, guys. <laughs> I was hoping to try the new Lisa Eldridge lipstick in love of my life, but this is vibrant. See what I mean? So I don't think I'm gonna use this lipstick today because that's gonna clash with purple. <laughs> it's definitely a fun like bolder pop of pink color, that's for sure. For, you know, maybe if you have a bit more of, in my case, because I like to have a bit more of a muted eye for something like that. I did pick up also Songbird Lip Gloss. This might actually work better. Let's swatch this one and see. I really like her lip glosses because they are nice and pigmented as well. So you can apply the product beautifully. See, that one's right beside Songbird. That one looks a little bit more appropriate for this eye look. <laughs> the last one I picked up for the lip glosses from the Lisa Eldridge order is Charm. Charm also is a beautiful, bright kind of bubblegum pink. So I'm gonna leave that for when I use the other lipstick. So let's go in with the lip gloss Songbird. That is pretty. I do think the lip liner is making, I mean, obviously, because I filled it in and stuff, it's making the lip a little bit darker. And now let's finish with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray, sorry, <laughs> setting powder, setting spray in the white tea of Bali scent. And there you have it, guys. What do you think of this new look today, trying out all these new products? Do let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching. And until my next one, guys, take care and stay safe. Bye guys.